and welcome to Chips With Everything. In case you hadn't noticed, the festive season is upon you. So while it may look like I'm still hard at work, the truth is I'm actually curled up in front of the fire at home, probably rearranging my collection of antique tiddlywinks. But in order not to leave you bereft, we've scanned our archives for the most common PC afflictions we cured during the year and come up with a few choice moments from the happy hours we spent locked up in the studio. Yes, while we try to bring you a selection of questions and answers on each show, the truth is that there are many queries we get again and again and again. Questions like these. First this evening, a question from Philip Ness, who lives in Doncaster. He wrote and said, Dear Chips and Everything, I have a P133 clone with 24 meg of memory. I would like to be able to upgrade the processor with one of, the M one of these AMD K6 MMX chips. Is this possible and are, they, are there any pitfalls that I should watch out for? Many thanks for a great show, Philip Ness. Well, thank you, Philip. Um, Simon, mm. obvious the person to speak to, really. Um, what do we do about upgrading? And, and is it a good chip to upgrade to as well, the AMD K6 MMX chip? Yeah, it is. Very good. Um, by the way, Philip, I know your brother Elliot. Um, you know his brother <laughs> Elliot? <laughs> <laughs> there are a few pitfalls. Um, the K6 is what you call a dual rail processor. It needs to have two voltages supplied. So your motherboard has to be able to support those two voltages in order for it to work. Otherwise, if you doesn't do that, you're, you're limited to what we call P54C type processors, which are just one voltage processors. But there is a way around it. If you have got one of those, you can actually um, use a processor upgrade based on uh, the IDT wind chip, which gives you all the MMX capability and fast processor speeds up to about 240 meg. Right. Yeah, it will fit in an ordinary standard Pentium socket. And you right. get many upgrades built around that type of technology. It's How really do you easy. know which is the right motherboard, though? Well, generally speaking, you look on the motherboard and there will be jumpers um, giving you options for voltages, and there are two voltages. The ones you're looking for are 2.9 and 3.45. Okay. okay. Roger, what do you think of the AMD K6 chip? Good fine. one to go for? Yeah, fine. I mean, I, I would say that his, his motherboard all, almost certainly can't take the AMD K, K6. Right. He'd have to go for some sort of upgrade, like the Hyperace uh, Millennium. Mill millennium. I, I can't say it. <laughs> millennium <laughs> 240, which is a sort of uh, uh, a, uh, an up upgrade processor up upgrade, which is much simpler than buying a new motherboard. Indeed. Millennium. <laughs> OK, well, hopefully one day uh, Roger will learn how to say millennium. <laughs> Until then, song, then, follow his <laughs> advice and your processor troubles should all be over. We've had a letter now from Colin Stevens, who's having trouble saving files. He wrote and said, Dear Kate, when I have downloaded games from the web and loaded them onto my hard drive, I open them up and they work fine. But when I try to send them to a floppy so I can load it onto the kid's computer, my computer says it's loaded them OK. But when I try to open them on another computer, they will not work. Please, can you or your boffins help? Simon, mm -hmm. are you a boffin? I'm not a boffin, not You're yet. Not a boffin, Perhaps if my hair recedes a bit further and I get some glasses, then maybe, but <laughs> not yet. But you probably qualify, well, you're not even a gamer, really, are you? No, no not particularly Saving a game. Saving files, <laughs> that you can do, can't you? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and I think what's happening here is that the, the chap's obviously got something installed on his PC, which is required by the game in order for it to work. And so he may just be copying the files across rather than performing a, a full installation of the game on his uh, child's PC. So We're talking things like plugins, different yeah, extra, extra yeah, downloads that you can yeah, get to make Yeah, video drivers, that sort of thing that might be necessary for this particular game. Right, how would you go about finding out if that's the case? Um, Is there any easy way? An easy way? Well, I would suggest that um, he take a cl closer look at to the configuration of his machine and, um, and what sort of vi um, graphics capability he has and then look to check in and ensure that it's the same on, on his uh, Just see how it compares with his PC, kids yeah. Computer. I'm sure there's probably a far more elegant way of doing that, but you know, I, I think there's, there's something missing and he's not doing a full installation. I think the full installation would probably address the problem or at least highlight what was missing. Right, right. Kevin, you're nodding furiously over there. Are you a gamer yourself? Um, a little bit. I'm just curious about how big is that floppy that a single, you know, single floppy uh, can hold a game. Well, it must some be of these games are quite small, though, aren't they? I mean, you get the little card games and things like yeah. that, the free games you get from the internet, or freeware and shareware. It must be awful small to fit on a single floppy. <laughs> <laughs> but so you think maybe that's the root of the problem? No, I, I really think that the real issue is, is that I'm, I'm wondering if there was a copy done instead of an install. Just moving the files over doesn't may, mean that it's going to work. An install will say, ah, you've got this video driver and this sound card, I'm going to need to load these drivers for that particular machine. Right. So I would really look at doing an install instead of possibly a copy. Right. Okay, well there we go. We've got two answers there which are pretty much the same. Make sure that you get the right installation, not just a copy, and make sure that your settings are the same on both computers. 
and that should solve your problem. If not, well, you can come and call on them too. Now, as you've seen it, when it comes to wrestling with PC problems, our experts are trained for close hand-to-hand -hand combat. Occasionally, though, injuries are inevitable. Now, next up is a question from regular Chits as Everything viewer Paul Eddington, and he is se he's selling his old 486. Any takers? Oof. Um, he wrote and said, Dear CWE, a couple of questions. I have an old 486DX66 PC with 8 megabyte of RAM and a 540 megabyte hard drive. I'm in the process of selling it and need to be certain that all the data stored on the PC has been removed. I plan to upgrade the Windows version of 3.1 to 95 in the process, but need a little bit of direction to be pointed in. Would a piece of software such as Partition Magic be of any use to me in formatting the drive and then adding the partition back to the drive? Secondly, what is the best method for networking two PCs, a 450 Pentium 2 and a 166 Pentium MMX? Thanks, Paul Eddington. Well, Paul has an awful lot of computers on his hands, it would seem, Roger. Yes. Um, first of all, um, well, let's tackle first of all the 486. Yeah, well, well I mean, first of all, why up, upgrade from Windows 3.1 to uh, 95? It's, it's, it's going to run like a dog with 8 megabytes of RAM and a 486. Forget mm. that. And in any case, I can now put my legal hat on and say if you sell a PC, you, know, you really shouldn't be selling the software. You, know, you, you probably don't have the right to sell, sell the software with it. Right, so you um, need to you watch have to be careful out about that. You know, I mean, I mean, probably nothing will happen. But technically, from a you know, strictly legal point point of view, just just for, format it and put Absolutely. put dots on it. You know, well, that's we're talking it. about selling this four eight six. But I mean, I sort of look through the back of sort of like you know magazines and see second hand computers mm -hmm. on sale, and you can even pick up a Pentium mm -hmm. for sort of yeah. like you know a couple of hundred quid. Yeah, exactly. So, is it really worth selling a four eight six? Do you think it's going to get anything? It's going to get it? fifty quid, seventy five quid for it tops. I'd have thought. Really. You know, it's not a great deal, deal of money. It might be worth keeping it as a spare, but again, you're going to sort of raise much revenue from that. Yeah. Okay. Well, very quickly, we need to move on. Um, best best me method of networking two PCs. Best method of networking two PCs. Windows 95 and Windows 98 are actually quite good for networking. You just need to connect the two PCs together. You can even do it just by uh, using. Um, a, a cable between the two parallel ports. Yeah. The, best, cable. Direct the cable. best way, though, yeah. is to buy a couple of plug-and-play networking cards, thin Ethernet cards. Okay. Well, if it's a long-term solution you're after, then uh, uh, plug-and-play networking cards is the answer for that. As far as your 486 goes, do be careful about selling it with software on that doesn't necessarily belong to you to sell on. Um, and you're only going to get 50 or so quid. Why not think about giving it away to a charity or maybe a school who are always desperate for extra computers to use in their education? Now, finally tonight, Tommy from Barrow and Furnace would like some advice on overcoming some printer problems. He wrote and said, Dear Kate and team, I'm having some big problems with my printer. Every time I try and print a letter, I receive the message, incorrect installation. This seems to be the, to do with the ink cartridge. I've tried uninstalling the printer and reinstalling it, but this has not helped. I've taken the ink cartridge out of the fitted and fitted it correctly, first trying the other colour cartridge and then the black one. And now I, now I get the incorrect installation message for both of them. I have a Hewlett Packard DeskJet 693C and running Windows 95 on a P75 machine. Please, can you help? Kevin, well, we have to help. He's, he's, he's tried to solve his problem and he's doubled it, hasn't yes. he? He's given himself yes. a problem on the, on the colour and the black and white cartridge. Mm. What are we talking about, incorrect installation? I would look at this as buying another set of cartridges and trying it again. It seems like the the problem is following a set of cartridges around and what I would want to do is get some certified HP cartridges and road test them through the system first. Right, do you think, I mean there, there are a lot of sort of like, you know, recycled cartridges, sure. remanufactured sure. cartridges, maybe he's trying to use these? N yes, and there's also one more thing that could be causing this uh, from a physical point of view is that the contacts where the cartridge fit in are metal and if they get dirty or something's in the way the cartridge can't communicate to the printer so it doesn't know any is it a color cartridge is it a black cartridge all of this stuff so you may want to clean all of those contacts really well how do you go about doing that just a cotton bud and yeah or you can take yeah cotton bud as y'all would call them um, dipped in some Ear sort stick. of <laughs> Ear stick. Yes. Um, dipped in some sort of uh, isopropyl alcohol or something like that some spirits right. and uh, be sure you're in a well ventilated area. So check out your cartridges and clean up your contacts. Mm. Simon. I tried to clean up my contacts, never possible. <laughs> With <laughs> alcohol. <Yeah. laughs> Something else you might want to do is to look in the um, 
in the printer properties because it may be that when you change cartridges you have to actually set a, a software switch in the printer properties as well. Right. So it might be worth a look. I mean, that's a printer specific thing really. Okay, great. Well, there you go. Check your contacts, check your cartridges and also check in the printer properties and make sure you haven't got anything missing there as well. Well, that brings us to the end of another of Agchip specials. Do join me next time for another selection of classic Christmas baubles. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.